Sing at this time verses 1 through 3. We'll come back and sing verse 4 after we hear God's words of forgiveness in a few moments. Verses 1 through 3.
almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift of grace that we come into your presence and offer true and faithful service. Grant that our worship on earth may always be pleasing to you, and in the life to come, give us the fulfillment of what you have promised through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And then, please have a seat. I mentioned the idea of a battle that we're in. This lesson in Ephesians describes the battle that we face every, every day of our lives. We're in a battle against spiritual forces. It's a battle for our soul. We're safe in Christ, but we guard against the devil's attacks. You hear about the armor that God gives us. It's his, his word, which gives us his truth, which plants faith in our hearts, which keeps us in, in Christ. Listen to the armor that our God gives us, Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your heart fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is the word of our God. We'll hear the encouragement from Psalm 139 sung for us. The words are printed for you so you can... Meditate on the Jews.
words of our gospel lesson, Jesus clarifies that while he came to bring us peace, that doesn't mean we're going to necessarily have peace in our lives here on earth. In fact, he explains that we should expect conflict. As we hold on to his truth, and many forces oppose that truth, you can expect there's going to be discord and a lack of peace in many cases. Through it all, we're assured of our greatest treasure being Jesus. We also want others to see that as we hold on to this truth ourselves. I invite you to stand as we hear the words of Jesus recorded in Luke chapter 12. Jesus said, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is the word of our God. A verse, Alleluia. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. Please have a seat. We're going to sing our next hymn, hymn 349.
This week and in two Sundays from now, we're going to wrap up our look, our survey through the book of Genesis. We're taking a look at these last three, last week, this week, and two weeks, at God's power and grace in the life of Joseph. How old do you and I deal with temptations? If anyone is tempted to hedge away from how relevant this matter that we're talking about is from our everyday lives, then let's, let's just think practically. Imagine being given the task for just a day, for a 24-hour period, to very, very consciously observe and, and watch for and then take note of every single temptation you face, temptation to sin. How long do you imagine your list would be? Think through this morning alone. What about, what about the hour or two just prior to church? Do you face any temptations? Temptation maybe in the midst of, of scurrying to, to get ready, to get the family ready, to get a little short with somebody, to get a little angry? Do you face any temptation as you drove here? Did another driver do something that tempted you to, to just let that fuse go off with your temper? Or as you peacefully drove here, did you face any temptation where a, a memory popped into your, your mind of something that got you, you angry this last week? Something that someone did and you're still angry? Or, or something that you're bitter about? Or something that made you jealous? Day in and day out, every day, how do you and I deal with the temptations that we face? The first part of our answer is to identify. As we, as we learn to identify the sins that are brought our way, we're getting prepared for the attacks. And of course, we're also getting ready for the, the next part in the, the battle. We're getting ready for the fight to fend off temptation. But this is really actually a, a battle plan that we have before us. And we are in a battle. And you know when you're in a battle, you want to know your enemies. You want to know the attacks that are coming towards you so you can get strengthened for the fight. So let's do that today. Um, we first look at some common temptations. We'll delve right into the account, the real life account before us, the life of, of Joseph, this chapter that we see in his life starting at verse 39. Listen for the different temptations that Joseph faced. We read in Genesis, starting at 39, picking up a few verses in the chapters that follow. Picking up where we left off last week, Joseph's brothers had just sold him into slavery. He was carried off as a slave to Egypt. And after a while, we're told in Genesis 39, verse 7, his master's wife, that's Potiphar's wife, took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in this house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the other of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. 
She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, and then we hear how things went as well as possible for someone in prison. And he was entrusted with more and more responsibility from the, the overseer of the prison. He even ended up rubbing shoulders with a couple of Pharaoh's servants, one of them being the cupbearer. And the cupbearer was released and was going to speak well of Joseph to Pharaoh. But we find out, 40 verse 23, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. When two full years had passed, Joseph was left forgotten in prison for two years. Before finally the circumstances in Pharaoh's life led the cupbearer to go, Oh, I made a mistake. He brought Joseph to Pharaoh's attention, and then we find out this ending there. This is 41 verse 40. Pharaoh said to Joseph, You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. This is the word of our God. The topic, how do you and I deal with temptation? The first temptation that, that Joseph faced in this, this, these days of his life is the, the very obvious one from our text, right? The sexual temptation that was proposed to him by, by Potiphar's wife. Sexual temptation is thrown up on us from so many directions today. Whether it is a, an actual person, like was the case with Joseph, who offers themselves for a fling or a hookup, or if it's the bookstore, offering Fifty Shades of Grey, and the, the tagline, indulge in a little guilty pleasure, doesn't that tell you? All you need to know. It can come from websites posting provocative or pornographic images intended to incite lust. Always with the, the little words of, oh, it doesn't hurt anybody, given as explanation. But it's really just the opposite. It does hurt. It hurts people. It hurts the people who are used for their bodies. It hurts the people who are looking at precious souls as just a mere object. It often hurts or even destroys relationships. Temptation can come from a, a group of guys or ladies who are, are bantering around and inviting you to, to join in the, the sexual banter that is just so common in our day and age in society that it's, it's considered normal. We're reminded that, that normal doesn't always equal right. Let's name such things for what they are. Temptations. To sin sexually in thoughts, in words, in actions. We can support one another by helping each other to identify these temptations that we face on a regular basis. At times, we'll need to help restore someone from our midst who's fallen into to sin, to temptation. In a case like this, it may mean pointing them to help, to get out of an addiction or a, a sexual temptation that's got them entangled. But there are more temptations that we find in, to identify in these verses than just the, the sexual type. Look on to, to chapter 39, verse 20, and then 
the, the story as it unfolds from there. This temptation is more subtle. In fact, we don't even hear any words spoken to Joseph. But think of how you would feel if you were in the silence of Joseph's cell and what temptations would attack you. Got any thoughts? Oops, I got, got ahead of myself there. Temptations silently knock at the door of our hearts when things go bad or wrong in life. Some such temptations may be especially intense when we, like Joseph, do what is right, and as a result of that, have a disfavorable outcome for us. Think about that. There are the temptations then to hold bitterness and anger towards the people who have put us in that place. Or there are temptations to get angry at God, to doubt His promises that He, he loves us, that He's present in our lives, to become bitter or discontent, disgruntled at what God has allowed. So, we face temptations where, on the one hand, the kind we're offered pleasure, but in reality it, it ends up hurting us and hurting other people. It's just the opposite than what the temptation offers. And then we have the temptations where something that is really good is taken from us. And we suffer pain and loss as a result. But now, look on to the time when in Joseph's life the circumstances were all changed. By the end of chapter 41, we find out how the Lord had directed things in Joseph's life to bring about the good that he had planned for him. Joseph is, is raised to a, a position of, of world power, prominence. He's got respect. He's got... He's got everything, materially, I'm sure, at his hands that, that anyone could desire in that day. We find out in chapter 41 that he's given, he, he finds a wife, he's given a wife, he and his wife start a family. And so I ask you, with, with life going so well for Joseph at this point, what temptations could he possibly face? What do you think? Here's a quote that I, I thought captured well some of the, the temptations to identify. The same gracious hand of the Lord, which during Joseph's trouble and disgrace had kept him from sin, from disbelief, and from despair, now, at this point in his life, preserved him in his exaltation from the sins of, of pride and from falling into heathenism, either the worship of the false gods that surrounded him, or materialism that so many people fall for when they're blessed in such a way. Here's the lesson. No one here on earth is exempt from temptation. Temptation may change as you, you grow in age and go through different phases of life. It may change in different circumstances of life, but it's never absent. So now Joseph enjoyed many good things from the Lord and the temptation that came along with it was take the Lord for granted. It's easy when many good things are given to focus one's attention and be enraptured by the many good things and forget about the giver. We too identify when we're given many good things in life the temptation that we face to focus on the many good things and to forget or neglect the giver. Also, there's this to consider. Do you think that Joseph may have been tempted to want to fit in? He was now accepted. He now had family. Think about how much Joseph would stand out from everyone else if he continued 
to only worship the Lord in a culture infiltrated by false gods in Egypt. How would people respond to that? Now think of the, the temptation that you and I face to, to fit in. You will certainly stand out in life if you hold to the truth that Jesus is the way and the truth and the only source of eternal life. Be ready for some tension or some outright conflict and hatred from the world that often gets directed at God's child who is holding to God's saving truth. Jesus spoke of that. We heard that in our gospel lesson earlier in our service. You and I, of course, we, we want peace with those that are around us in life, but it cannot be peace at the cost of truth. That does no good for our spiritual well-being, and it doesn't help in any way to reach out to lost souls with the saving news of Jesus' forgiveness and peace that's found in Him. So, now, we've gotten some practice identifying the temptations that are going to be coming our way. We've noted this helps to prepare us against the attacks that we'll face, but How do I fight off those temptations once I've identified what they are? Joseph gives us a great example to follow. There's a, a very practical side to how Joseph fought off the temptation he was propositioned with by, by Pharaoh's, not Pharaoh, by Potiphar's wife. We're told... He ran. And we're told, actually, he did more than that. Did you catch that? He refused to even be with her. See what he's doing. If you put it in a, in a very nice, concise way, he's guarding his environment. Guard your environment. The Lord tells us to flee from temptation. He says... Flee from sexual immorality, from sexual sins. Flee from idolatry. Flee from materialism. Guard your environment. Like Joseph, take the added step then once you, you flee or run away from temptation to, to follow this other direction given in God's word to, to mark a temptation and to, to stay away from it. We can't prevent every temptation from coming our way, but we can certainly identify what might be danger zones and stay away from those. It's not rocket science to figure out what that looks like. Get internet filters and, and keep them going on your electronic devices. Check out reviews of movies to see what their content is, to see if there's anything objectionable before you, you go and sit down in the theater. Or check out the ratings on the TV shows and get a summary of what, what's on there before you, you click, or so that you can click right past them. Or how about this? Don't go to, to just look at the mall, or to just look at the, the car dealership if you have a temptation to overspend. This is nothing new. Um, guard your environment. Martin Luther said, you can't keep the birds from flying overhead, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Which is just another way, I think, to say, guard your environment. That's important, and it's good direction, but the most important thing in our fight against temptation, in order to be able to, to fight off temptation, is to keep in mind the answer to this next question. What gives you the reason? What gives you the, the, the motive and the, the inspiration? And, and what gives you the strength to actually 
fight off temptation? What gives you the strength to, to keep the birds from nesting in your hair or to, to keep temptation from swooping, to, from swooping you up when it swoops into your life or to, to avoid the ones that you've identified and marked? Joseph shows this strength and the place that this desire comes from to fight temptation when he says, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. You see what it, what's there? Joseph had God and God's love right there with him in his heart and on his mind. He knew the promises of the Savior from sin. He trusted in the faithfulness of God to keep the promise, to take all his sin from him, to take the curse of hell from him, and to give him eternal life in, in the Lord, our Savior. Joseph so valued God and God's love and that relationship with God that he didn't want anything else to interfere, to get in the way with that. Joseph guarded his heart. We're told in Proverbs chapter 4, above all else, guard your heart. So what does that look like to, to guard your heart? Keep the Lord and his love at the center of your life. Keep his love on your, in your heart and, and the sight of, of his presence in, in mind at all times. Okay, so now, to help us hopefully take this, this, this truth home, to guard our hearts, I'm going to invite the kids up. So, kids, come on up and help us. Hopefully, we'll take home this truth by doing a little, little example here. Okay. okay, let's back up just a little bit here, because I want to make room for, for doing one one thing here, okay? All right, that's good. Right there, that's good. All right, thank you. Now, someone once asked, how can I fight temptation when it's all around me? It seems like everywhere I look, there's some temptation that I see. Now, I'm going to answer that question, but First, I want one of you to help me with a task, okay? And you're all going to be involved in the reward, but one of you, I need to, to help me with a task. Who's got a steady hand? We're going to take one of the older ones here for today. Joey, you think you can do this? You got a steady hand? So, so here's the task. I've got a reward here for all of you, and, and when we're through, I'm going to let you take one of these, but it's only if Joey can walk without spilling a single drop from this glass. It's filled pretty close to the top. And so, Joey, well, let's have you start over here and just walk over to your sister and back, okay? If he does it, then everybody gets the reward, okay? Okay. Maybe we'll just have you go over there. That, that one will go over there. Okay. All right. All right now. Okay, thank you. Now go back to your spot and don't don't look around. Just look right here. Okay, look right up here to the front at me. Now the question I have for you is this: As you did that, did you notice what time the clock on the back wall says? Don't look. Did you notice that? No. Okay. Did you notice how many people are seated in the third row? Don't look. In the third row, on this side in front of the piano. Did you notice? Not guessing that. Did you notice? No? Okay. Did you notice what was sitting on the, the organ bench over here? Did you notice? No? So why do you think you didn't notice any of those things that are around you while you were doing this task? Why do you think you didn't notice any of those things? Where, where was his attention? His attention was on the cup. Okay? Now, that's the answer to the question I gave at the beginning. How can I fight temptation when it's 
when it's all around me, when it seems like wherever I go, I see some temptation to sin. Instead of focusing on a cup of water, what you do is you focus on and look at Jesus. And you think about what Jesus has done for you in life. And as you, you go through life, there's still temptations around you, but the temptations drop by, by the wayside, and your attention is focused on Jesus. Think about what Jesus, in His love, says to you and to all of us. He says, I love you. He says that even after we've fallen into a temptation, which we do every day, He says, I still love you. Focus on that message. He says, I still love you. I've taken your sin away. Through faith in me, your sin is all washed away. You are my dear child. That is the news that leads to our thanks to God and helps us to fight all of the temptations we face. Okay, you guys can each take one of these and head back to the ending. To head back to your seats for the ending of our... Thank you. Hebrews 12, 3 says this truth we're looking at, guard your heart, and how, how to do it with these words. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And it's interesting to know what comes before that in, in Hebrews chapter 12. Let us throw off the sin that so easily entangles. It's no coincidence that then shortly after that, let us throw off the sin that so easily entangles, we hear the encouragement. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And it goes on to say this, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart in your battle against sin. Focus on your Savior and His love for you as you fight off temptations that threaten your relationship with God and His truth as you walk through life. Now, to close, I want to give you one more image. Instead of the image of, of carrying the glass of water and focusing on that because there's a threat, there's a threat that you're going to lose to something. How about this image? Think of the person who is, is so enraptured, they have a nose in their book, even as they're, you ever see that? Even as they're walking around and doing, they got myself in trouble, they're doing something else. Have you ever seen that? That the story, the story that they're, they're reading has caught their heart so much that they, they, can't, they can't help it. They've got to hang on to it. They've got to keep reading it, keep going through it, even as they're going through their, their other activities. In the fight against temptation, what gives you and me the reason to fight off temptation? It's having our eyes fixed on, on this story and getting captivated by our God's love here. That in Jesus, we have forgiveness for all our sins. And we have eternal life in heaven waiting for us. May the Lord give us strength to keep focused on Him and His love all our lives long. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your heart's and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have a chance to join together in confessing our faith in our God and what He's done. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed projected for us or on page 6 in the service folder. I invite you to stand as we join together in these words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Please have a seat. We'll continue our worship by gathering our offerings. <laughs> and then we'll join together in the petitions that Jesus has taught us that printed for us and which is standing at this time. Lord, keep our eyes fixed on you and your great love. Love what you carried out in order to, to save us, wash us clean, and assure us of heaven through faith in you, Jesus, our Savior. In the midst of recovery from surgery. Keep Julie and Colby's eyes on, on you and your great care for them. Continue to, to grant them recovery after their, their surgeries this past week and two weeks, and continue to, to be with them. Bring them healing according to your will. Above all, assure them and us in the midst of such health, troubles, and, and trials of your great care for us through all of this. Go with Chuck this week, Lord. Bless the surgeons that that, um, undertake his eye surgery. We grant. We ask that you would grant healing for him, and recovery, that he can return quickly to his work and his labor. And Lord God, we ask that um, in this season of school opening, that you be with all of the, the children of our congregation and, and our other churches as they, they go into classrooms, both here and other places. We especially keep in mind those who are in our our synod schools both the high schools at Luther Prep School, the Michigan Lutheran Seminary, our college at Martin Luther College, and our seminary, Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Lord, bless the studies this next year. Go with the students at their, their tasks to study your word and be built up and to, to serve you, serve you in our congregations. Lord God, be with Paris and Simeon as they are at Luther Prep this upcoming year. Bless them in their year in their studies and help them to be a blessing to their fellow students. And then, Lord Jesus, we ask that you hear us as, you, as we pray the request that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Final hymn of praise. Bring it for us. You'll have to turn the page if you're following in the bulletin. <laughs>
study kids in their Sunday school classes. Um, that'll be in September after Labor Day weekend. For a few more weeks, um, we're just taking a little bit of time here. we got one question today to discuss and try to just to put application to what we talked about in our sermon message. So here you go. Take a minute or two. And kids, while we do this, if you want to come up, I've got what was in that on the organ bench was just stickers. So if you want to come up and pick out one or two of these while we do this, you can. So take, it, take this and, and, and just Share this with one another for a minute or two. Those next to you, if it's husband and wife, or if it's just people sit seated by each other, set up your fight plan. That's strange, but ask. Set up your fight plan. Set up your fight plan for your family to, to fight temptation, okay? So we have the two key truths we looked at. Um, let's generate some ideas. Name things that can help in the goal to guard your family's environment. Talk about that. And then... Once you identify sin, to guard your family's environment and name things that can help in the goal to guard to guard your hearts. Okay? So, you got a pen or something, or if you just want to think of a thought or two, take a couple minutes, talk with each other, and then we'll come back to share. What's your fight plan? Okay. Kids, if you want to come up and, and pick out a sticker, if you can. want to share with the group and if, I, if you can speak loudly great if not I'll try to repeat so that everybody gets a chance to hear anything anything for number number one name things that can help in the goal to guard your family's environment yes crystal okay together okay so stay in the word would be the absolute essential okay you can think of different, practical, specific ways to do that, but that's the heart and core 
of it all. That's, that was the last part of guard your hearts, right? How do you guard your hearts? You focus on Jesus and his love. Where do you get that? Okay, who else? Dave. My wife just brought to my attention, my, my son has a 5-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 15-year-old. They put filters on all the family computers to keep out the bad stuff. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so an example of technology and how am I guarding this environment to keep temptation away when we have known threats. Good. Other examples? Anybody else? One or the other or, or kind of both together? Things practically to help guard my family's or my own environment or my talk. Heart. Talk, communicate. What's that? Talk and communicate. Okay. Talk and they communicate. They don't know what's going on in their life. you kind of unaware and they could be turning your head. Okay, how are you gonna how are you gonna be a support for each other against temptation if you're not talking with each other? You don't have a, a format and, and, and practical ways where you're okay. let's sit down. Let's talk. Do you set aside certain times each day? Do you set aside special times each week to make that happen? Think about that. Good. I haven't Jean. had taken the opportunity, but just what? talking about what is being said on TV in the name of politics and that is it right or wrong that people say no. such things about each other. I mean, that's we have this every day, and I think children, they live what they see, and this is sad. Okay. So, when things are there in our environment that, that you can't always avoid, and you cut through it, what is right, what is wrong, we can encourage and guide each other in our life. Kind of a tie-in with the conversation, but specific. Good. I've got one passage I want to share with the especially with the, the last thought, guard your hearts. It ties in with that example of focusing on Jesus. This is an encouragement from Titus chapter 2. Listen to these words. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Wow! Don't you want to just bury your nose in that and, and be you know, captivated by that message? The grace of God that brings us salvation Forgiveness for sinners. And then, but then it goes on. Listen to this. The next verse. It teaches us, so the grace of God. When your heart is focused and your, and your, your soul has heard that news and, and, and you're putting your trust in that, the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Do you hear where your power comes to fight temptation? It's the grace of God. So the more that we're focused in, in hearing his message and being built up in our faith of how much he loves us, the more we're equipped and ready, motivated and strengthened to fight against temptation and things that would threaten us. Okay, so think about that in the coming days. We've got a couple of announcements here um, to make. We've got some things coming up here. So today, today, stay around for, for refreshments. In fact, I saw a couple people bringing in things, but there's a cake. It's someone's birthday tomorrow, so there's a cake. So Karis, his birthday is tomorrow, and so yeah, that would be great if you're on the Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Karis. Happy birthday to you. She's turning as red as I am. <laughs> no, no, no. no? Okay. All right. I'll give you that one. Uh, here. We've got uh, a few things uh, going on this week. The one that I especially want to highlight is um, today and next Sunday. Today, we have our, our congregational voters meeting. We, we don't really have anything new on the docket. Um, we do just want to formally do two things. One, we've had um, some council positions open. And we have a couple of men that have offered, uh, asked, been asked and offered to serve to fill out those council positions so we can kind of get rebooted um, with, with, with that, with that um, area of service. So um, Aaron Steubenbull has, has offered to, to serve and then also Tim Shankweiler. Tim Shankweiler. So, um, so after we get to refreshments, um, we'll, we'll just approve those if, if everyone's in agreement. 
And then also the other thing is just to formally welcome new members that have transferred in. Um, we've got new members and sometime soon we're going to have to do a new member welcome, you know, a meal and pot, pot luck and everything, that'd be great. Um, James and Charlene Plekka, um, your transfers officially come through. Um, Jorge and, and Vicky are getting a transfer coming through, so we wait to, to do that, but we can welcome everybody at the same time. It's great to, from Falls Church, Virginia, and then from Clarksville, Tennessee. The Dunn family came in a while ago now. I'm trying to think who else is, is brand new here. We've got student bowls. I think we have to officially welcome, transfer you, even though you've been here a long time. So we'll probably do that in, in the, the, uh, the voters meeting. So am I getting everybody? I think that's the new families that are here. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, and um, the other thing I want to do now is, is update you just a little bit on the, the building planning group. Um, just take maybe two minutes to do that. But I want to highlight next Sunday. Next Sunday, guest preacher, missionary Flunker, missionary to Brazil, Richard Flunker's father, will be in town, it turns out, when I'm gone for the weekend. So he's going to lead the service and give a, a, a mission encouragement to us next week. I know you'll enjoy being here. Um, we got a potluck down for after the service, so bring some food to share and get a little extra time in. Um, maybe he'll, he'll be able to share a little bit more with you personally then in, in that time as well. So that's up next Sunday. The one I know with next Sunday, we're going to switch communion celebration to the 28th. A little easier when I'm back versus with a guest, um, I guess, the worship leader and preacher. So communion will switch to the, the 28th. Okay. The only other thing I wanted to highlight then on, on the building planning group update is we're going to meet again at Notes in the Bulletin on the 28th. Um, before that time, we've, we've already got one meeting in with um, a civil engineer who it turns out had been referred on. Um, and it turns out he not only does civil engineering, we found out, but he also does design and build. So he does architectural. So if we desired, if it worked out, it could be a smooth process with him all the way through. So that's one that we're pursuing. Um, we also are pursuing a, a, a referral from an architect that Bob is going to meet with. He had to reschedule for this next week. So by the 28th, we'll have that in hand too. Um, an initial free visit with there and, and, and to, be able to, to be able to consider that. And then um, we're pursuing one more. Then um, our sister church in Jacksonville, North Carolina, has used a, a firm, Tar Heels, something or another, builders. Um, and they're, they've already got the design, and they're right now securing their land. So they haven't built yet, but they've worked really well with them. So those are our three that we're pursuing to hopefully have information all, on all three by this next meeting. So we're moving forward, and it's, it's been very positive, I think. Anybody is welcome to be in on those meetings. Um, so if, if you want to, to be able to know what's going on and stay, can stay around on the 28th, you're welcome to, to be at that. Okay? The one other thing with that I wanted to, to mention was I, I got an update from, from Kathy just keeping track of our finances. We do have a separate building fund, but we do want to highlight again that anything we give to that, there's offering envelopes on the back table, anything you give to that, um, that's above and beyond regular offerings just to carry out our mission. Even just for carrying out our, our mission, our regular budget this year, um, we, we planned it from our grant from our, from our synod and the offerings here, um, to make it happen, our offerings here still need to increase from where we were at this past year and where we've been at. So keep that in mind as you plan your gifts and your offerings. Just to carry on our mission, we've got an increase that we're trying to meet to be able to, to reach out with God and proclaim God's truth. And then, if you want to give something above and beyond to the building fund, um, then we've got that set aside too. So we've, um, Kathy, you mentioned, that just the general fund for expenses has, has dipped some over the over this last little bit. So instead of hovering around five or six thousand, I think in the, the bank on on an average it's more down to thirty five hundred. That sound about right? Just to give everybody an update and, and know where we're at. Okay? Any other questions I can answer briefly. Otherwise just talk to me individually. <laughs> We can update you on anything that's going on. Okay, good. Um, God be with you. God bless you this next week. And in your worship next week with Missionary Flunker being here, hang around for refreshments and snacks. And then the voting members will just cover those couple things in a few minutes after we get a chance to, to greet and, and grab some snacks.